Hello, Robbie Strike here. Today I'd like to talk about this website, RadioShackCatalogs.com. This place is an amazing place where there is a snapshot of history of uh, all these Radio Shack catalogs all the way back from 1939. And it uh, just an amazing snapshot of history in this, just to show you the prices of electronics and what they carried at the store Radio Shack back all the way up to the 2011 version. Uh, it also has the computer catalogs for the TRS and Tandy line of computers that Radio Shack uh, carried. And it uh, goes through some of the history of Radio Shack and has some other documents uh, here at the bottom. Oh, they even have TV commercials, awesome. Radio Shack? Okay. What? The 80s called. They want their store back. It's time for a new Radio Shack. You're too late. So definitely give uh, RadioShackCatalogs.com a check. I'm going to look at this one here. So this is the 1986 Radio Shack catalog. I like the cover. It has a Radio Shack branded C-band satellite dish. There is a portable color TV. With the aerial sticking up back in these days i did have some a, a, ver, a, a variant of this i believe it was a realistic brand which is the common radio shack brand and uh oh yeah the car phones or sell your phones but i remember in the 80s calling these car phones and a tandy computer with um I, I remember the interesting thing about tandy is they had their own version of dos which was uh made things easier to navigate and you open up the catalog and you're you being 1986 there's this new product that's uh replacing that's replaced eight tracks and records it's called the compact disc, disc player for 300 dollars. and i'm pretty sure this is a uh american uh version probably is the american version gift certificates so it's interesting how cd players were this big huge the size of a vcr here is vcr Video cassette recorder. Deluxe VCRs with quick time or er, timer recording. Recording VCRs with spectacular stereo sound. They have the VHF hi-fi stereo audio channels levels on the side. That was kind of a, your deluxe VCR from Realistic. You'll see a lot of Realistic brand branded stuff in the Radio Shack catalog. That was their store brand. Realistic Tandy TRS. A lot of this stuff it does fit in your cell phone now like this is a huge box uh, you know <laughs> this huge thing of vcr sat on your tv and the new super beta hi-fi for visibly better pictures and superb stereo for about 500 dollars, you get yourself a beta vcr 20 percent more picture resolution 105 channel cable relay tuner that was important these days because a lot of tuners had uh, UHF for like broadcast UHF, but cable UHF were two different frequencies. So sometimes a lot of these devices you need, would need to switch between the two. It's a realistic beta. So that's another interesting thing that beta, which was made by Sony, but other companies did have the license to produce beta, but there was definitely a lot more VHS machines. And then we go into stereo systems and basically a stereo was like this. I don't even see people with houses that have too many stereos unless it's an old classic stereo system where basically you have multiple, multiple uh, media formats. Like you got your LP records. I think this one probably does, this probably is the CD player. There's the cassette player. There is the radio tuner, which is this giant box here. Uh, and that might be an amplifier for that the record player would go in, that all the system would go into that sound system. Super power, super power digital. 
digital synchronized receiver, high power plus stereo expander. Is these four or five hundred dollar uh, devices had your digital uh, radio tuners built in them? And at the time, like a lot of tuners were the uh, analog tuner, so like the dial would maybe slide out of proportion. If you have a clock radio, you might still deal with that. So digital receivers, and then you got these much cheaper, just your manual tuner uh, receivers, and definitely the accessories that would come with it: stereo micro amplifier things like that that we get in their smaller stereos as well boombox which we'll probably get to later on in this catalog two great receivers money saving systems audio cassette players wow that's quite expensive for an audio cassette player but this would be if you really wanted to get good audio quality out of an audio cassette some of these more high-end players would be able to play the uh higher end audio quality from uh for your stereo system and usually if you bought tapes they were pretty good recordings sometimes it didn't sound the greatest like say if you recorded it from a cheap tape off the radio this is kind of one of the cool um deluxe uh, options the linear track turntables where basically it's like a cd player where it just it's just it just knows where to find the track that is so cool um and then you don't have to touch the record. Surprisingly, I don't, I haven't seen these. Probably they're out around, but I haven't actually seen these. Uh, I see a lot of the little record players like I've reviewed, but not like the full size turntable and lots of speakers for your stereo. Some really big ones. And remember, when you die, they can bury you in it. And some speakers if you wanted to build your own boxes. I remember people did that too. They would take their own pine boxes put this the speakers in them and build their own uh speaker system install your speakers like a professional and you, just, you can ha hang them on and you can select your speakers all these accessories and that was the great thing about radio shack you'd walk in and you had like <laughs> all these different accessories for uh connecting everything up and you could basically like macgyver anything into into what you uh would have needed so i remember when a lot of these adapters were like a buck each I would grab them and just have like a bin. I have a bin in my house just full of adapters that would be from like Radio Shack and here in Canada later the source and some uh, other accessories here and some stereo equalizers. Remember the keyboards. I remember uh, getting keyboards for Christmas. Headphones. This is like back in the day. This was a lot more common in those days was the one quarter to one eighth adapter. There's different ones, but I have this for my, my keyboard just to listen to it with headphones. You'd see a lot of that back in these days. You don't see them as much now because everything has the uh, three, three, four uh, headphone, you know, your standard headphone jacket, which has become a standard. Unless you're an iPhone user, of course. <laughs> then you got, I don't know, some weird adapter that I don't even have any of those. Soft touch dubbing decks. Yeah. I remember uh, churches having these for tape dubbing and they would do high speed dubbing. I don't know if this one has it the ability to uh, do that, but what they could do with uh, some of these dubbing decks is they would have the high speed dubbing so you can copy a tape really quickly. Make studio quality copies in half the time. So I wonder if half the time refers to the speed dubbing. Automatic continuous play mode. That's a cool feature for, the, for in those days. I think it does play double speed and then you can record from what this description is saying and that's the deceiving thing sometimes you just see these descriptions like amazon and like wish to this day you read these things and you think it's going to do something and it actually you misread it and you're screwed but it says uh twice two tapes sequence in twice for twice the listening time is how they explain it I don't know if that's explained well <laughs> for what I'm thinking it does, where it plays this tape twice the speed, makes a copy in twice the amount of time. And it would have to be a synced system. You wouldn't get like a device like this that would we would sync up. But I did have one of these tape decks and it was great. I mean, I, I this was my first MP3 player back in like 2000 when MP3 players were like, were basically like $500. I would hook one of these tape decks up to my computer, record MP3s to tape, listen to it in my car. And here is the stereo portables with detachable speakers. We definitely referred to either a boom box or a ghetto blaster, but they're not using that term uh, in the marketing here. We have the AM FM. I don't get the whole dual detachment speaker thing, but probably for when it's at your home, you would want to separate the speakers i do remember having one of these that actually had sh a shortwave tuner in it which i thought was pretty neat or they would have other bands in in the uh in the radio part and then here's your very basic slim down cassette player boom box D definitely a staple for listening to music 
Jeff, uh, probably like in the later 80s, uh, I would listen to music on cassette a lot more than uh, with records. Um, just because it was portable and records were like very uh, much like there's a whole uh, lot of storage um, that you have to take into account with uh, with LP records. But now that I, I can appreciate the sound, it, it does sound a lot amazing on the LP records. And here is some of the toys. I don't know if anyone had the Kitty cassette recorder on the Go cassette uh, built-in sensitive. I do remember these things. These voice recorder, tape recorders, these were very common um, with a lot of ports. I like ports. You have your in port, out port, and all that. And it has the microphone all built into it. But you can hook one of those. I remember these things had those, the microphone where you push the button to record <laughs> if you're taking audio notes. Compact one-touch recorder. So this is like your Walkman recorder. Uh, no, this is like for taking notes. And here's those micro cassettes. I never had one of these micro cassette uh, recorders. Now people would use their phone to take notes. I did have a doctor who talked into a tape recorder for his notes and had a secretary uh, dictate uh, or... Um, enter it uh, stuff down i guess and then we're getting into the walkmans where you have the walkmans with the am fm radios built into them so a lot of the time the uh, antenna would work when you plug the headphones in and these were the headphones back in the 80s which were very common now i use the dollar store ones that are like you know your bit like the better ones we looked at earlier but this was like a very common type of headphone i remember this metal getting all twisted up and here's the tapes this is kind of cool so this has the super tape the metal the gold, the high bat, high bass, and the low noise. <laughs> it's all good, but which one's the best? Probably the most expensive one. If you're like in a garage band and you had a four-track recorder device where you put the uh, audio tape into the uh, into the four-track recorder and, and record your band, a lot of people would use these eight-track reel-to-reels. People would do recording with that. I don't know if they had the digital audio tape at that time. Probably not by '86. But this is all analog uh, recording for you. They're just recording. These are the high quality audio tapes. And then uh, these uh, super tapes. If anyone used these, uh, tell me about this and uh, any of these reel to reel tapes. I've never, I, a friend of mine had one, but I never actually owned one and used any of these reel to reel tape. And there is uh, tape head cleaners. Uh, that was a kind of a thing. You'd have dust. Head cleaners for eight tracks. All right, on. Here we are getting into the VHS media stuff, uh, audio videotape organizers. If you go into any thrift store, a Valley Village, or Salvation Army thrift store, you'll probably see one of these, either the audio tape storage uh, things, the wood grain, you know, you could set it on top of your TV, have your Atari, it all matches. Personally, I would take my VHS tapes, put them on the shelf and stack them up and had them, had them in shapes. I didn't have beta. I did own a beta machine at one point, but not really... Uh, didn't really use beta my buddy chris had beta his dad had an amazing selection of beta movies that he recorded you know what that's interesting that the vhs tapes were about nine dollars and the beta tapes were like maybe about eight bucks a little bit smaller um, but you wouldn't get as much record time with beta I, I guess it says one two three hour for beta where vhs I don't know. There's this whole argument. I, I <laughs> let me know in the comments. I guess uh, the two, four, six hour record time versus the one, two, three hour record time. This one even had oh, it had a longer take place, so it actually had four and a half hours of record time. Uh, so that's interesting that Beta did have some longer play tapes. Now that would be on the slower speed. So what would the reality of Beta was if you slowed the speed down? Uh, to your beta tape, you're pretty much getting VHS SP quality, if if not a VHS LP quality. If you didn't know what the LP quality is, there are three qualities for VHS. There is SP, there is LP, and then later on there is SLP. And so SLP, you can get six hours of record time. LP, we got four hours, and SP, you got two hours. I used to actually like the LP mode because you got a better quality video, and it was, you got about four hours out of your tape. That was kind of the format I went with, but then I started, got a new VCR, and the new VCR only played SP and SLP and didn't and skipped the whole LP part, which kind of sucked. Microphones. And so it has some mic stands and uh, all the various microphones for uh, 
if you're doing some public announcing. I never, you know what? I've never seen these in use. These are kind of interesting. These uh, omnidirectional microphones, solar powered. <laughs> omnidirectional microphones, tie clip mics, you know, your lapel microphones that have the clip. Listening aid uh, systems, which is like uh, an amplifier, pretty much that. A lot of these things, I remember, you turn them up too high, you get the feedback. Value price PA amplifiers for every use. So these would be like oh yeah, PA systems for if you're in a building and you needed to do some public announcements. More accessories for PA announcement things. Audio accessory for any system. You got your audio mixers. This is actually pretty low price for an audio mixer. Don't know how great a quality they were. Heavy sound level meter with seven ranges. Wireless mics and portable PA systems. So this would be like maybe used in a church or in a school or, or something like that where you have your lapel microphone that is wireless or for a video camera. This looks like it probably has a plug. You got your FM uh, wireless uh, uh, microphone so you can talk it on a radio. That'd be something I would want back in the day. And you have your uh, megaphones. Mini music. Another record player. Uh, kids record player with a lot of these kids record players would have like uh, the microphone singing along. This is, I guess, a strawberry. Strawberry Mike lets kids. Mike lets kids sing along. It doesn't say strawberry shortcake. Just says strawberry. And some more uh, stereos that don't necessarily have the uh, um, the whole table uh, console set up. But you get like pretty much your all in one. I, I these were quite common in those days you'd have cassette maybe not cd player but you had your input for a cd player and here's your car radios uh kind of we're going into the time i think it came a few years earlier but you're starting to see more and more digital tuners on radios uh so if you want to upgrade your radio you didn't like the radio that your car came with common thing is a lot of radios came with am fm but without cassette so you had to go out and get a cassette tuner in a lot of cars so you'd have to uh these things would come out and you get in put in whatever you you know uh, want and definitely in the 80s and up till the late 90s i was using cassette in a car because that would be like your common thing in a car <laughs> have your manual tuner t type thing here but i really like the digital one i remember listening to am radio uh, uh the w they had this show called radio wwf and i could listen to it in the car so i go into the car we had a digital tuner this would be in the early 90s and uh, listen to uh it at night when they would come in on skip just listen for jim ross's voice and uh you'd hear him uh doing like the basically pre kayfabe <laughs> interviews uh with wrestling people call in and ask questions and stuff and some of the wrestlers would do interviews and you know they wouldn't break kayfabe which is kind of fun for those days and we got under dash cassette and unique accessories so i i never seen this uh where you kind of like what a cd player would be where you would hook up uh you know put your tape underneath the dash but then you have to go in somewhere and change the tapes but uh, ne never um, a compact FM converter because some of the that was, this is an interesting thing here because some cars would have AM only adds FM to your AM car simple plug installation uses existing antenna does not affect AM reception lighting dial only so this is kind of interesting is I would it transmit to the AM frequencies I'm not sure that's kind of an interesting um uh, mod that they would have because a lot of cars in those days they didn't they only had am radios i i had a van that only had am radio easy to install fm booster boost uh, signals to 6 db and this uh, this is cool if you have an eight track in your car you can plug an audio tape in don't know how well this worked i'd love to see a car i, I joked with some friends if we could put like a uh a, install an eight track player in a car just to have it like what the heck is that <laughs> All right, more speakers and stereo faders, headset controller, selector switches. This is the great thing about Radio Shack. It had everything and any, anything and everything that you would you would need, especially if you're like in using CB radio stuff. Uh, here's where we're getting into like CBs. This is kind of a must-have too for a lot of things that you would buy. 
a lot of things that were like realistic branded it is uh like a an adapter for um, hooking your cbs into the car without using the batteries oh these are am fm antennas okay yeah so you can get different uh am fm uh antenna values if you wanted to change the antenna in your car a rubber ducky am fm antenna and some car lamps some, lots of car accessories I'm not gambling with my safety this winter. I just put a CB from Radio Shack in my car. At only $89, I saved 60 bucks. Now, wherever I drive in any kind of weather, I feel safe. This switch is my instant shortcut to emergency channel 9. One of 11 front panel features. Sale price realistic CB. I wouldn't drive without it. Now, just $89. Only at Radio Shack. A candy company. With realistic CB, you'll never drive alone sounds kind of creepy top performing mobile cb antennas so here we go into cb radios oh i, I love this this is the section this is pro i could skip pages and go right to this section i had this this realistic radio I'm gonna zoom in on it we had this one we had this one one of our vehicles had this one the had the pa system and then there's your basic model for like 59.95 whatever if that's American or Canadian. Still works last time I tried it. Oh, it was a couple of years ago now. Um, but they're built well. A little compact radio. And these things, they lasted years. And they were in the car, like, in the heat. And in the winter. Still going strong, too. So this would be, like, the Cadillac here from Realistic for your car. If you had, like, the uh, AM S signal sideband, SSB. Uh, CB for more range and channels for $179, new for $86. Provides 40 AM channels plus 80 signal sideband channels, mainly 80 because 40, you've got your upper and your lower. Yeah, I guess I, they can say that. Be a great thing to have. I never had a CB radio that does upper, lower sideband. Can listen to upper, lower sideband on my uh, software defined radio. But yeah, this would be the one that... I didn't have that one, but I had this one and this one. With one of these, I, I did shoot skip on... Remember, I was in Pembroke, and I, I shot skip to, like, Kingston, Jamaica on one of these in a car. Had really good propag propagation at that time, I guess. Don't do a lot of skip shooting these days. Maybe I should get back into it. Here is your uh, your home mobile base station. Now, the thing I liked about the, the base stations is I hope this one does come with it. Dual power, easy to use on road or at home. I, I can't see the back. They don't show the back of this thing, but like, because um, some of these things, they would have the power supply built into them. That was kind of the nice thing about the base station units where if you wanted to use a mobile unit, you could, you just had to have a power supply. It was pretty much the same radio inside it that you would have in your car for at home. But if you had a good antenna, I don't know if they have the, the omnidirectional directional crossbow they don't have what i had which was a blue stick still have it and it was like a big antenna but man oh man did it ever i got quite some distance with our base station set up i had a big blue stick and i had this and i could get quite a lot of distance out of it on a clear day i could talk to neighboring towns other base stations in neighboring towns uh, from where, from where i was uh multi re Use realistic walkie-talkies. See which one. I'm trying to see which one I had. I don't remember having this one here. This was an interesting thing with walkie-talkies for this time. Was you get these walkie-talkies like this one or this one. A one-channel or a three-channel walkie-talkie. So what would happen is they you would open them up and they would be a crystal inside them. And you could change them to different crystals uh, to have different channels in them. So that was like a thing that they had back in those days. I think there was a couple of these that had crystal radios. When I bought this one, I think it was something similar. It's hard to say. There's three different models here. One of these models that had the three channel, um, I, you'd have to add a crystal to it. I don't know why I bought this one with my hard-earned money. I should have just went ahead and bought the, like the multi-channel one. I didn't have this one, um, but... Uh, there were some of these ones were, were really nice. And the crystals, so you buy the crystals. Here they are for like five bucks here. And uh, you'd have to get two crystals. You'd have to put in the transmit and the receive crystal. Okay, you open up your radio and you, you, it had a slot for it. 
And uh, so you get either your, um, uh, see what you, they advertise here. They have 35, the 19, 11, 9, 5. I had 7, and I had 19, and I had 13, I think, is the ones I had. So I, I think they had a more range of things in the store uh, where I went to to get the crystals. But yeah, it was an extra add-on of channels. So make Radio Shack your telephone company. And Radio Shack having their brand of telephones prior to, so this would be the 80s and in the 90s, there was stores, even in malls, and and, uh, Radio Shack had its little section of it where they had their uh, different types of phones for, um, it was so commonly in department stores for uh, for them to have telephones where now... I don't. They might only have one or two of these in stock. A lot of the times, it's cordless phones, not like a wired-in phone like this. Interesting how the times have changed with cell phones and with portable phones. And if you're like really fancy, you had the phone with the multi lines. I think that was an extra cost. I didn't see that until years later, probably like early 2000s. <laughs> My house, old-fashioned type phones. Yeah, but there was a store called the Telephone Booth. And it had like Mickey Mouse phones and uh, phones that look like a pay phone. And you got your multi-line phones. Doesn't show you the connections because I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you had. Uh, it says uh, no rewiring necessary. But this was kind of a thing if you had a business line in your house, a, uh, a personal line. Oh yeah, the phone companies would be like if they found out that you were using your home telephone for a, a, for a business, they would like charge you the business rate. Affordable multi-line phones. You have your pocket pager from Tandy. Now available in most major city cities. Call any Radio Shack for details because I think you'd have to you'd have to be in like an area where the cell phones and the pagers were working. I don't think this one was pretty early in the in the short life of pagers, where it didn't show a digital readout of what was going on with the pager. generation of affordable cellular phones at an incredible price breakthrough from Radio Shack, the technology store. Hi, Daddy, it's me. And now there's a totally portable phone at a price we dare the competition to beat. Yes, we can. Okay, be there soon. Radio Shack, the first name in cellular telephone technology. I do remember here in Canada, Rogers, which is also, at the time, they were called Cantel, and they were like one of the early cell phone providers, uh, a Rogers spinoff company. And uh, yeah, I remember these it had the digital readout, you had send, clear, and they were interesting how you would operate a cell, cell your phone in those days. They're on TV, you know, they always kind of showed them on TV, so it looked really, really cool like on Miami Vice and all that, and people carried around the, these like tanks for their cell phones. <laughs> and portable phone, and talk anywhere with a big antenna. I don't know how long the batteries would last on these things, but yeah, these are the early cellular phones. And they were really expensive at that time. So like, <laughs> here you go. You got your cordless phone for, from the telephone booth, space-saving dual cordless phone, plus an electric clock radio <laughs> built in one. Saves you an outlet. All in one, having your phone and your uh, and your cordless phone. And one thing I do remember about the mid '80s is we had the telescopic antennas, which broke a lot of the time uh, on the cordless phones. And then they have the flexible antenna as an add-on. Oh, I love this! Radio Shack knew they knew <laughs> that these things were gonna break, so they had the accessory for it. when you broke it, you would buy this thing. This is the they have the crosshairs through it. To, it's longer than that. Replace broken antennas. <laughs> Better than long, clumsy pull-up antennas. <laughs> Why don't they just make them with the, with the rubber antennas built into them? So they knew that these things were gonna break. So they 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 knew that you know we better, better put the uh, rubber ducky antenna uh, accessory that you screw on to the broken antenna. So here's your handyman case. So now they have the Star Trek phone here, small enough to fit in your pocket for your cordless phone. Uses the uh, low FM frequencies, the 46 to 49 megahertz frequencies. Features touch redial. I think I remember having one of these, and these were really good range on these things. And if you had a scanner, which we'll get to the scanners later on, you can listen. You can listen to your neighbor's telephone calls on your scanner. Oh, and then you, here you go. <laughs> telephone testers. Okay, we got telephone testers. Okay, this this thing here, I got I got a comment on. 
convenient auto dialers and amplifiers. So <laughs> this thing here, if you can't remember numbers, like I, I don't remember numbers now at all, but you would have your um, <laughs> this device here for uh, remembering your numbers and entering a code so that you can quick dial to your numbers. I don't know. I, I don't know anyone who had this, uh, but that's kind of an interesting. Hey, it's a gift idea, right? Our best phone speaker. So here's your speaker phone. I think we had something like this, uh, where you plugged it into your phone line, and it didn't dial or anything. But you dot use your regular phone to dial, but you can put your uh, calls on a speaker phone, which every cell phone pretty much now has a speaker phone in them. But yeah, you had to go buy for. Forty forty nine ninety five. You'd have to go buy. Oh yeah. So here's a speed dialer where you push the button, and you uh, type the number to call your friends real quick without having to remember the numbers. Some of this technology was very much forward thinking. And there's your phone tester from RS Realistic. <laughs> okay, this is like something out of spy movies. This this is a portable telephone listener. No wiring choir amplifies calls so others can listen. <laughs> suction cup pickups picks up works i don't know if these things would work on cell phones today but i remember having one of these suction cup uh, microphones and basically it would pick up your audio uh from your collar so you can hook you know stuck stick the suction cup on the back of your headset of the phone and you can listen to your calls so this is like an amplifier so like if you're talking to someone others can hear what's going on you could have like a group call definitely radio shack was forward thinking they they were they saw the future and what technology you know there was inventions here for the time it came out in it might not have taken off as well but it was definitely around at that time phone answerers never miss a call again so here we got the answering machines that you get at radio shack and definitely they would have the phones with like the answering machines like the separate units or you get the all-in-one phones with the answering machines and I, I love that they have remotes for the uh for answering machines which probably got lost <laughs> where you can hey let's play the message instead of go up to the machine go around the house find where that remote is and play your telephone messages oh dual cassette answers i wonder what this this is kind of interesting like forgotten technology here dual cassette answers dual cassette makes it easy to store and charge tapes build complete tape library switch messages length only setting oh here, okay so this is like here so this is kind of a neat setup too that answering machines had you call your answering machine at home and then it would play the messages back to you over the phone if you read the manual and figured out how to do it you could have this feature set up which i i know a lot of people didn't even read the manuals on these things oh great i know people who would have bought these things oh great it'll play it back from a phone but not actually read the manual and figure out how to do it <laughs> and they even so sold comedy edition tapes for your answering machine that's kind of interesting that they would uh, do that <laughs> and you could put that as a recording for your uh, telephone answering answering service oh okay and your telephone multi-line controllers so if you don't want to buy like a multi-line phone you want to have an accessory you can get these controllers for changing your lines everything you need jacks plugins and cords uh so yeah if you want to put a wall jack in your house and hide away the wires split your phone connection which we probably did in my house dra draining the power of the phone system <laughs> and uh get these things here that uh to get like phones and we'd run a wire all like underneath the carpet and every which way do our little retro fitting job and have our phone in our bedrooms and things like that yeah i got some intercoms this is kind of neat and fun stuff here Telephone add-ons uh, for Radio Shack. Uh, it's like the middle of the book. I can see the way the bit, it's bending here. The indoor doorbell. There's your remote control doorbell for downstairs. Uh, you can talk on the telephone with a headset adapter. 300 number automatic dialers. 40 station battery powered wired intercom. I actually like these wired intercoms. I got one of these I don't know, for next to nothing at a thrift store and um, ran the wire outside from the cottage to the trailer and uh, had a, an intercom set up for that. Is it something that you actually use? I, I never really use it. When you're a kid, though, you want to talk on a two-way radio, I guess it's kind of a neat thing to have. I do remember having this. Was it this one or this one? I think it's this one here. This is the one-channel one. Oh, <laughs> Plug and talk FM wireless intercoms. I do remember having the call button, which would be annoying. And then you had the push to talk button, had a little lock in the button. So when you pressed it down, you slid it over and it would hold the hold it down so it would transmit. 
Joy talking, no shouting from the living room to the bedroom, kitchen to shop, from any location, any room you desire, and there's no wiring necessary. Simply plug, and you'd hear the sound in the background while the thing ran. Call one touch uh, and lockable talk, locked uh, lockable talk, talk bar and hands-free conversations. Yeah, it's kind of like basically this was like a walkie-talkie, except you plugged it right into the wall. It doesn't show the cord for it. It's no batteries. It's just like uh, plug it right in. Uh, but yeah, I was like a walkie-talkie, talk through your house with it. I used to bring it to multiple rooms. I don't know. I liked this stuff when I was a kid. And your FM monitoring system, so you can like listen in to other rooms for your baby. Obviously, this picture here. It's hard to see the quality of the picture, but there's a baby in the room, and you can listen to it. Now I figured out, like, pretty much you can actually use, like, an old cell phone and um, set it up as a webcam and stream it over your... There is apps you can get for Android uh, where you can simply do this. <laughs> cell phone, you could do this. You, there's an app that would allow you to do this. But a lot of these things you can do in an app now. All right, we're getting into television sets pocket tvs with fold open lcd screens okay because some of these things would have a mirror to make it look bigger which i think this thing did i didn't have this pocket vision is it the pocket vision yeah realistic had the pocket vision and the screen for color would make it like it would be so small compared to today's standards but this was 1986 right you can get like a black and white tv on these tvs the reception the tuners on these tvs actually were pretty good for its its day for um receiving over the air tv i remember i had one of these little like something like this tv here it had better reception than like my big tv and it was like i could pull in channel uh channels that my other tv could i should have kept this thing and it was a good monitor too this one's black and white okay i had like the color version of something like this and they were heavy duty too it's breakthrough 2.6 color tv for 300 dollars in 1986 which uh probably this would have been one of the very early lcd screens that were on the market i think they were like if you open up at a copy of popular science which also is another great history book from this era you'd see like this a few years prior but maybe this is er er the early time to see it on the market but also when anything comes to the market it's usually like $300 for one of these little TVs where the black and white version would be like $100 and people would go for the black and white version. This one here, here is interesting because it has AM with AM, FM, radio and cassette recorder. It doesn't show the cassette, but I remember that being so deceiving. I thought it was like a VCR in it, but it's not. It's an audio cassette recorder so, and it doesn't record um video on it which i think the deceptive thing in the headline was oh it's a vcr built into it but it's not a vcr it's an audio cassette it's just not enough information cassettes record from audio built-in mic so it's kind of stating that it does do that i don't know if you can record the audio from your tv programs directly that would be kind of interesting so let's go into the other tvs here this one has a remote Yeah, you're starting to see uh, TVs with the channel on there. Another thing that came later is they started doing away with these and having like the on-screen uh, TVs, which at the time when they first came out, I thought that was amazing. Oh, you can make graphics on your TV with 13-inch uh, color TV with wireless remote. I think remote controls are becoming like standard. Although there is still, and even in 86, there is TVs with your traditional dials. I wonder if this one has channel selector cry brightness. I don't know if this one did like cable UHF, which would be an interesting. Um, some of them, that's that would be the problem. But I think some of them had a switch on them to do that. Uh, so here's a little color TV. These color TVs were amazing, though. They had like a lot of adapters. They were very sharp TVs. Good for gaming on them. I remember hooking a gaming on there. Telescopic rod antenna, high performance. And then there's the, your little black and white TVs. These were very common in those days, but $100 for a black and white TV. This is something I would use. My first time ever setting up a satellite dish, I connected the uh, receiver up to a black and white TV and uh, and use that. It still worked. You know, it was black and white and uh, use that to get find the signal for the dish and then uh, got, got my uh, satellite dish tuned. This is like in the 2000s, years later, but we still had these things. These things probably still work. If you still have one around, it probably still works. They're built well. All these things are. My uh, Pocket Vision, it's dead. It doesn't work at all. Not this version of it. I had a different version of the Pocket Vision. There's your 19-inch uh, your monitor TV for 
five hundred dollars that seems really expensive for like a 19 inch and here's uh some uh indoor antennas in the 80s it was the era you never saw those flat antennas that you see now you saw antennas like this and some of these antennas perform pretty decently i don't know if any of them had here's one that actually has amplified uh indoor antennas and i have actually had really good luck with that indoor amplified antennas when i lived in town with a in the analog days even with digital, though, I have had an analog um, one of these antennas, and it worked pretty decently for me. And then you have your antennas that are not. Here's a, one of the original bow ties. First time seeing a bow tie antenna. It was pre-digital. Like I think when uh, digital came out, they started making a lot of bow tie antennas, like, and then uh, marketing them. This is a digital antenna, but this antenna here, this budget VHF antenna, will still work for over-the-air TV. Just depends on how close you are to the signal. Um, but obviously certain antennas will perform better. Something like this, so like an amplified indoor antenna, is probably the one a good one to have. Contents, your index. Color Supreme 2. And they're gold. These antennas are made out of gold. I don't know what they are, but actually, I don't know. Most of the antennas I see these days are not yellowish, copper, goldish, whatever that is. What's the most expensive one? So this is probably the... The VU-190 is the expensive one. That's the good one to get. That's like, that's, you got your UHF thing here, your UHF part of the antenna, and then this big part is VHF, it's, which is kind of silly. This huge part of the antenna, which is like on these other antennas too, are for your VHF channels, but that's like 13 channels, and you're like 14 to 59. Uh, is, is it even a 59? I don't even know if they have 59 anymore. I think it's lower than that. Oh, and this is 1986, so four channels, two to 83 plus FM and stereo. So, so to UHF uh, 83, I think they ended broadcasting on 83. Even by that time, I think they may have stopped broadcasting, but this flyer looks like it was printed probably early 80s. I don't know, looking at the font and everything here. It's from Ar Archer. Archer, yeah, because it's an arrow. Archer antennas. I don't know if realistic ever made antennas. And they have strong uh, square boom with uh, no tilt clamp, snap on bracket, boom length. Okay, they say the length, number of elements and the length, which is good because some, like the best antenna, which would be the V190, would be like the, um, the longest antenna. But it's like if you want the ultimate antenna, this is like, it's going to be like big, you know, for VHF low and everything. Like if you're crazy like me and you want like the best antenna, I don't even, you know, I don't even use a, a, the best antenna like this, but if I were to change my antenna, I'd probably put something like this up. I still have my antenna from like when I lived in an apartment, so I just use it. It works. For the finest VHF and UHF, VHF and FM TV reception. And then you have your uhf tv antennas so different uh, models of uh, uhf antennas here with a reflector an important thing to have with an antenna if you're really hardcore for antennas and these are expensive now these are like two to three hundred dollars i see them on ebay is the antenna rotors for better reception and what this is this one is a dial and you turn it and it will turn the rotor so that the antenna will turn accordingly for your uh, reception and you want to get this like on a big tower. I don't see towers here, but Radio Shack did sell like masting poles, which are basically like poles that you stick three to four on top of each other, and you can put it up like an end, uh, like a tower. Which actually, if you have masting poles, the way you mount it to your house, you can just turn your antenna manually and you talk to someone on those one of the on the on a walkie-talkie or on a CB radio. Okay, it's coming in better. You know, all these things that you need to buy at Radio Shack. <laughs> to get uh, TV antennas. Car van VHF TV antenna. I like that too. That's pretty well. I like how it's it's hard to see the illustration of this drawing here, but they have it on a camper or on a van. <laughs> Set up on a van. Get crystal clear color, color or black and white TV. And antenna companies, they don't change. Uh, get crystal clear color or black and white TV. <laughs> Just to try to market that. You, you, know, you don't need... Uh, a special antenna for color TV, where now it's like the same thing with digital. You don't need a special antenna for digital TV. And they have this car uh, antenna. I don't. I never seen this actually in use. This is interesting. Looks like it would break. 
It's like you're asking for it to break. Oh, so this like hangs in the window. That's awesome. <laughs> so you can like put an antenna in the window on gutter or window. So this is like your window install antenna. Just roll the window up. It wedges in the window. You might have like when you're driving down the highway, you'll hear the, the wind whistling through the crack of the window. <laughs> but you can watch VHF channels while you're driving. Well, preferably not the driver, but the passengers can watch TV. All right, what else? Oh, okay, this is, a, this is the accessory part. You're going to set up your antenna. You need these everything for a pro in quotes <laughs> antenna installation telescopic antenna mass 16 and 18 gauge galvanized steel interlocking sections telescopic antenna mass it looks like it's guyed up i don't get this picture but raise your antenna only antenna for stronger tv and fm reception sturdy structures interlock won't pull off twist i, I this drawing is i don't know if it's i don't know if it like it's actually one pull and it goes up because you can get pulls like that for antennas. I'm not sure what... The, sometimes the illustration of catalogs back in this day, these days were not. This is interesting. It's like wraps around the chimney without drilling into the brick. And uh, that that's an interesting antenna setup. And you're using like kind of like wraparound. And it has some... Uh, tightens the wraparound around. That's an interesting concept for antenna solutions i don't know chimney mounts yeah so that's that's an interesting i don't know if i don't think i've ever seen this done but they are selling it here at radio shack then you get these things here where you just sort of you, you screw into your building your wall or whatever and you'll mount the antenna up doesn't really go into grounding your antenna though eh? do they have a ground for it uh probably not it's like here you buy it I'm not going to tell you anything but grounding it guy wire hardware so if you want to guy up your like when it's something like this and you want to guide up to your roof or something like that you can do that boost your reception with our accessories so you got your vhf uhf 300 ohm foam cable our best 12 k that's number one yeah so this is like the two lead wire and that's probably by the foot a eh? 50 feet three dollars 100 feet seven dollars seriously that's a good price um <laughs> and uh what was the coax number five shielded vhf foam coax cable as it doesn't say has f56 connectors doesn't say if it's rg whatever uh i don't actually i don't think rg6 was even like common a commonly used term back in these days uh oh yeah so here you got your grounding so like in the house you can ground it so this thing here you'd run your cable through it and you have this wire here and the idea of this is you plug it into your pipe uh, your copper pipe of your house because it's going into the ground. So if lightning were to hit your antenna, come down your wire, it would ground it to uh, to that. To my antenna, right next to my tower, I have like a pole, um, a grounding rod that I hammered. It goes about f four feet into the ground and uh, have it going down in the ground that way. And here's some uh, wall mounts. Here's your 300 ohm TV switches. These were for games in the, in those days. So I use video game computers. I like how it's video game computers because there was a lot of consoles at this time. That you would use these archer switchers for but yeah it could be like your atari or your t game to the tv antenna just the way that it connects up there's actually a device now i don't think they have it here but i would have bought it back in those days if i would have known better is where you just hook your atari connection uh right up to uh a coax connector and just actually have a tv and have like really good have decent quality video quality with it there's these other splitters and combiners splitters combined lead with splitters everything in tv vcr and fm accessories which something uh, i don't know if anyone else did this but i did it if you had a vcr there was a way of sending that to the, your upstairs tv and all sorts of things like that basically this page has everything you would need to do that boost fm signal for better sound coaxial inline fm trap and things like that some you might have one of these laying around if you got like old stuff around 99 cents for a uhf loop antenna tv coaxial accessories and connectors switchers um this was like common for a lot of antennas where you would have two different leads one for your uhf or vhf and you had a vhf connection and a uhf connection and these things would plug into your tvs because tvs didn't always have these coaxial connections they actually had the uh the uh the 70 ohm uh 75 ohm connection things here 
I had a few of these things for my uh, cottage. We had like a TV antenna and to connect that up to the TV. I had this thing for the reset <laughs> to make it work. Switchers, there's signal amplifiers for VHF, VCR, and cable TV systems. So for amplifying your TV signal, and there is an amplifier for an antenna there, I believe. Oh yeah, they do have one of these things. A 20, which is a du dubbing kit for dubbing stuff. Uh, so if you're distributing your cable and you want to amplify the signal, I don't think I really used anything like this for cable, maybe for antennas for boosting the signal downstairs. VCR TV FM switch. Uh, I don't even know if these are overly necessary, depending on how you had your TV set up. Really, it could really complicate things having all this stuff going on in your TV, but people still have them. They had these uh, VCR TV terminators block attenders and switches just mainly switch your source switchers i guess oh and an rf modulator it doesn't show the back of it unfortunately but takes audio video signals from an av switches and makes it so like basically it goes to channel three or four so this is just a very simple rf modulator these are the most commonly like you find them in a thrift store for an rf modulator you'll find something like this that take your video source and make it into channel three or four or if you want to you could send uh, your VCR or your cable pay TV box upstairs and send it through a coax cable or <laughs> maybe with one of these things <laughs> and and where is it? and one of these things uh, you can uh, send it wirelessly but we're not supposed to do that anyway um, but if you have hook it Connect it with a cable, run some coax cable. You actually get a cleaner signal with coax cable. All right, and here we are. Uh, oh, boy. All right, I'll start with... Uh, I'm, I'm like itching to go here, but let's start here. Quality components for our video shack. Yeah, the video shack. Yeah. Stereo compatible video processor. Um, sound processor with, sur with surround sound. So these are... Okay, like surround sound systems. Supposed to be a, a video enhancer. Never, never seen one of these I really liked, but yeah, these are video enhancers. Uh, value price to a pit video selectors. So video selectors, I kind of use one that's more of a button thing where I hook up my VCR game console. I have like an old CRT TV. It has one input. And actually, I have this upstairs on the newer TV because the newer TVs only have one. So these things are kind of useful if you're still into gaming and you want to hook multiple consoles up. You can switch, uh, sort of do your switching. Does four video outputs. Also, just switch your antenna and all that. So here's a, this is an era of like cable TV block converter with fine tuning. This is an interesting item here. Restore, restore this remote control function. Restores remote control functions, converts VHF mid and super band cable to UHF. Let's you watch TV one TV channel while recording another with your VCR. Also returns in tuning your TV set and VCR. And if you have a remote control, you can use it to control all tuning, including cable channels, fine tuning, Control helps reduce interference and permits reception of offset cable channels, which may not be receivable on TVs or VCRs with PLL tuners. So is it like a FM converter? Or not an FM, a cable UHF? I'm not sure. Never been sure what this thing actually does. Maybe someone can let me know if they had one in the comments. Remote control cable converter. So this was a common thing in cable in the 80s. If you had cable, you had a dial TV, you got 13 channels, you hooked up one of these things and you found that there's 60 cable channels. Scan cable channels two directions across the direction, fine tuning your TV on off with the push rod interference remote or at least set PLL synchronized tuning system Assure, assures optimized performance st standard HRC switch for use of all cable systems, LED, digital uh, digital display, channel 3 output. So basically what these things did, if um, they would take the cable and output everything to channel 3 to your TV and uh, would allow you to uh, watch your above channel 13 cable channels because a lot of the TV sets were 
cable is still in its transitional period, I guess. And a lot of TV sets did not have like a cable tuner in them. So you had to buy these uh, converter boxes to make your TVs work. Now, later TVs had all this. You didn't need this. It had the remote all built into one. But if you had an older box, you had to spend $119.95 for this add-on um, to be able to watch Probably there was like a lot more cable channels on these things than actually the 13 with the dial. And there's a remote control extender, which is kind of neat. It allows you to... So basically, if you're sending your TV signal to another room, but you, uh, you're you using the same receiver, you could do that with this device here. I don't know if it's wireless. That, that's um, handheld remote. Super convenient. Works well with all infrared remotes, control, cable TV, converters, satellite receivers. Here is an example your vcr satellite receiver cable box is in the living room you're watching tv in the second tv in the bedroom this system relays the commands of your handheld remote to the bedroom to your video components in the living room you don't have to get up and in the living room and change channels assuming you have your cable box or your satellite receiver hooked up to this thing or hooked up to the tv in your other room really complicated uh, i don't know if you follow what i'm talking about here all right Let's talk about this thing. This is like the highlight, and it's just one unit in the uh, in the whole catalog. It's your complete home satellite TV system. It's an easy do-it-yourself installation. <laughs> uh, we even include a how-to videotape. Thank goodness for the videotape. Or go to Robbie Strikes YouTube channel, which we did. YouTube was not invented at this time. Okay, watch over 100 channels, movies, specials, sports, news, and FM radio. I don't know where they get the FM radio part and how they're trying to sell that, but I mean, you can get radio channels on satellite, and you could back in 1986 as well. I don't know what receiver. This is realistic, a realistic receiver. Here's the dish, and it has the um, Radio Shack branded you know, cup holder. I don't, you know, it doesn't say, all right, we'll get, we'll get into that. I really want to get into the, break this down. I'll read it, read through it. Okay. It has this advanced inside motor, motorized, uh, horizon, horizon to horizon mount. I guess that's what it was called. A H to H mount or a horizon to horizon mount and easy to assemble eight and a half foot mesh dish. So this is eight and a half foot. So this is like close to nine feet. So a little bit bigger than my dish. An eight and a half foot, which is a good size. Uh, Ten foot is what you want. But in the 80s, um, you know, it was analog. And you get some picks. You know, sometimes with an eight foot dish, you get like little picks in the video, like little static boosts. But I think you get that with a 10 foot or two. EV, easy to level base. I don't know what this thing is. An advanced 80 degree LMB. So I imagine it has a, uh, a servo motor in it to change the polarity which is a, yeah, a fun thing. 125-foot plug-in cable. This thing is not exactly plug-and-play. Weatherized housing, high efficient, high efficiency, efficiency feed horn, and um, motorized mount. So it's not. this is an interesting unit because it's not using an actuator. It's using the horizon-to-horizon mount. You don't really see these anymore, so like, I don't know if these are easily easily to be replaced. I'd never see these. So let's read through this whole description here. I'll try to get through it. Apologize for my dyslexia if I skip some words here or something. But block com conversion system let block conversion let system lets you add more satellite receivers to any any at any time and watch different programs simultaneously. So it may have had like an output on it so you can run the cable from the coax to the dish in your house to your receiver out to another receiver to another receiver in your house. I think that's what they're talking about. A realistic 2500 home satellite TV our all new state of the art system brings you 24 hour entertainment that you simply can't get anywhere else where you'll see the hottest stars, upcoming movies, ultimate in sports coverage, plus unedited regular TV programming, TV news, feeds, many special services. The polar mount and rotating hub is designed for easy do it yourself installation. The supported 25 foot lead in cable with connections is the direct braille type to conduct required the cable even includes a second coaxial line for multiple receiver use the attached receiver is pre-programmed for all of its preset north american satellites great thing to get the you don't get that too much even these days and those scheduled to launch in the near future as it's easy to operate 
as your TV set, simply select the desired channel with the wireless remote control. The receiver's built-in computer does the rest and positions the dish precisely. The, there is extra memory for new channels and automatic selection for all stereo format. Separate VHF channel 2 or 3 and stereo audio video outputs. Extra large 11 by 16 tall display for satellite name channel and video frequencies provision for automatic external discrambler discra switching receiver 4 by 16 and 15 to 16 by 12 includes all required har hardware cables for and complete instructions all components are UL listed for electrical safety. This is carefully engineered system that, and set standard for excellence in home satellite TV. In fact, nothing else even comes close to the price range. Complete HS TV system for 1995. Also, items also available separately an HS TV receiver, which is $600, which is, I guess, another one of these. So if you have it in a separate room, which I don't, a lot of people just sort of use the same one and didn't have multiple receivers. Eight foot and a half dish, eight foot dish was 13, well, $1,299.95. $1,300. The LMB, the low noise block converter, 80 uh, was like $229. And the HS feed horn was about $199.95. So this would be the satellite system that you get at Radio Shack. Um, definitely something I wanted back in 86. Didn't have until 2013, I guess. Yeah, but I always wanted one of these. Didn't didn't really get to experience much of the analog, uh, the analog days. By the time I got in satellite, everything was digital. So like... If you were to use satellite today, this thing would be useless. What would be useful in this setup is hopefully the HH motor still works. Well, you could yeah, you could actually use this to move the dish. That's what a lot of people do these days. They use the old receivers to move the dish and then hook it up to a digital receiver. I guess this also could change if the polarity control motor still works. This thing can change the polarity control, and you wouldn't have to change the LMB. If the LMB is botched, you would have to um, you know just simply spend a hundred bucks on a new LMB in the feed horn here and you'd be able to still use it i have to always say that because like people uh still have c-band dishes and wonder if they can still use them still plenty of channels that are available on c-band satellite just everything's got everything's gone digital so this thing for receiving be pretty much useless there's no analog channels anymore but cool part of history this was like the thing to have back in 1986 there was no direct to home satellite service I think by this time channels were encrypting, but there were still was several premium cable channels that were not not encrypted, but scrambled. I guess was what the analog term would be uh, that you could still pick up. So even though they'd be like HBO would be scrambled, there was a ton of channels that you could get on the on these things. TV, which uh, has this about two thousand dollars for a satellite system, plus there's the installation. So this is just the do-it-yourself at home kit. Uh, you'd still have to, the hidden cost of this probably would be like the concrete you'd have to go buy at the hardware store, at a building supply store, uh, dig a three by three foot deep hole, put the pole in. I don't know if it, it doesn't say anything about coming with a pole either. It says there's some uh, base, but I don't know if it actually comes with a pole or you have to go get a, get a pole to put in the ground and uh, dig under the ground to bury the wiring. So there's a big installation cost of these things. And that's probably why it's not, a, you know, never was as popular as a direct to home satellite service. Uh, but cool to have if you're able to, willing to do the do it yourself work and, and put that time into this. Move on to this multiple video distribution system. Uh, problem solved with multiple TVs. Combine signals with antenna and cable. This is kind of nice. I, I, I wish I could see the back of this thing. And up to three other sources with channel 234 output. Sends all the signals through a coax cable to other TV sets here. Antenna cable channels are selected as usual. Other sources can receive on UHF example. Someone watching on one TV, a videotape in the bedroom. Other person watching cable TV in the den. While you enjoy satellite TV in the living room, because you have cable satellite, cable satellite VCR and satellite to watch. Honestly, I probably if I had the money, I'd have uh, have everything too. I wouldn't blame them. In the '80s, so much good TV in the '80s. I don't know if this is actually uh, how it's doing it though. I'm still puzzled on how it actually works. 
Uh, if it just puts it out, puts everything into channels two, three, and four through the same wire. There's UHF uh, RF modulators that do this. That that might be what this is, and this was probably not the best system for doing that type of uh, distribution. Here we go. Where realistic scanners bring the action home car programmable scanner. So this would hear anything that was on the radio. I guess but these scanners are really good ones. These are kind of... I had one of these ones, and oh gosh, I wish I had one of these ones. Yeah, so there's scanners. Now, if you time travel back to the 80s and want to buy a scanner, <laughs> buy these ones. Um, buy the, pay, get the more expensive ones. You'll appreciate it. Just the bells and whistles in these things are much more amazing than having these things, which are really a pain to... You have to program in the frequencies, and, and it's just oh a nightmare to uh, get them set up. So I recommend the more expensive ones. Uh, the cool thing with this is you'd hear cell phones. You would hear um, the early cellular phones because it was all analog. You would hear your neighbor's uh, portable phones. Those were very, because they use very common FM frequencies, they were very susceptible for eavesdropping. So if your neighbor, if you're using one of those, your neighbor could have had one of these things and be eavesdropping in and on your conversations. But they're pretty neat. You can l listen into all sorts of radio uh, frequencies ham frequencies maybe if you're into amateur radio this is kind of where you would get your start uh these would probably be the better ones to have i think these are programmable some of them weren't even like they didn't even have a scan feature like you would just program them in which is really a pain to do that trying to figure out find out what's on the radio i like the ones that you can pretty much scan through the channels and you'd find if someone's talking nowadays i'd i'd recommend buying yourself an sdr for like 20 bucks and uh, using dqrx on a linux computer and it'll be a lot cheaper than one of these things and you can like kind of look into all the uh fm radio frequencies or uh, scanner frequencies like different antennas uh, for these units uh you can listen to the uh, i listen to amateur radio repeaters so they also had these portable scanners which are pretty much the same thing that you would have for your uh th those uh console desktop ones you can get these and i don't sure if they had the more expensive one probably this one here would allow you to um listen to all these uh frequencies that you'd hear your airplane frequencies and so it has your 30 to 50 megahertz doesn't do the CB bands, but does basically all FM and up. Here, 19 channels include police, fire, aircraft, hams, military frequencies, and even more, even even mobile telephones. So that would be this unit here. Here we are going into the multi-band shortwave radio. So you can listen to your AM, your FM, or your shortwave radio. And uh, Radio Shack was pretty big into having that uh, available. Uh, multi-band radios i think this is how i got my introduction into shortwave radio is having one of these probably not this one i think it was a rs version uh, version of this multi-band radios where you can hear your am fm uh, your police air shortwave am fm type bands and i think the one i had even had cb where you can tune and listen to cb radio so i had something similar to this maybe this on another page and just one of those amazing life-changing uh, devices to have. Uh, eventually, I got a digital shortwave radio, but I would listen into shortwave and hear, you know, preachers and stuff like that years ago. And they have this here, the, everything you'd want in a portable radio. I guess they have some TV. Oh, yeah. Another thing that you would see in radios a lot is you would have the, your FM or VHF tuners in these multiband radios. So you can listen to the TV channels. It didn't have TV, but you can listen to the audio of the TV channels. Kind of a nice thing to have because I even do this to, the, to this day. Uh, the local news is rebroadcast on an FM radio station. So at 6 o'clock, I'll put that on and I can listen to it in the car. And they have the radios that kind of look like your ghetto blasters, basically radios with no cassette, little tiny radios. Radios are, don't really have to be all that big. And this year, there's a small toy section in Radio Shack. I do remember in the store, though, <laughs> they have plush animal plush animal radios, I guess because they are Radio Shack. So everything is radio. At least it was back in, this, in these days, but they kind of moved in toward television and everything. Uh, bike radio, I don't know if, I don't think I had this one, but my brother had like a light bike in it, light that had an FM radio in it, and I think it probably came from Radio Shack. There's a Snoopy radio, Teddy Bear AM radio. Uh, i never even seen these. These are hilarious. Oh, it's only AM, so okay. 
Um, what else is there? So there's your little Walkman radios. I'm not Walkman. Walkman's a Sony marketing thing. So this is your realistic AM FM stereo mate. Stereo mate personal take along receivers. I don't know if anyone used these. You might look funny walking around, actually walking around town with one of these songs. Uh, these on was a your giant radio and you could tune it on the side. She looks like she's having a great time uh, soaking up the sun and listening to the radio. Get instant radio reports, weather radio alert. And it's just basically your weather radio receiver. Eh? Now, if you have like a GMRS radio, sometimes you can get the weather radio bands on those things as well. They usually have a feature like that. But back in 1986, you'd use one of these things. A lot of multi-band radios have this stuff too for the weather band stuff. But they even had like your little portable weather band radios. All they did was pick up the weather band. I think uh, later CB radios had the uh, weather band as well. So like if you had a CB in your truck, there'd be a button where you can listen to the weather band. Which up to the last I checked, they still have the weather uh, radio service uh, going on. It's great to have. I mean, in case of emergency, power outages, it's something you it should go to for weather reports. Extra feature AM, FM clock radios. So this is like pretty ultimate, eh? But it's not a telephone. Like, I want the clock radio, AM, FM, digital clock radio, record player, a cassette player, telephone, Atari 2600, game playing. No, they didn't fit that. You'd have to buy that separately. But an AM, FM cassette or alarm clock so you can... I don't know if... I would hope that you'd be able to like play your music and have it re set the play and wake you up. And this looks more like the clock radios. Actually, I have a clock radio I'm looking at right now on my desk, and it's kind of like looks like these the wood grain AM FM clock radio has your uh, settings. Mine's a General Electric, but it looks a lot like these. Another thing that a lot of these radios had is you had a nine volt battery in case the power goes out. If you had to wake up at like five a.m. and the power went out. And you wouldn't be late to work. And here's your uh, your batteries, your Radio Shack Excel brand for rechargeable batteries. I had some of these rechargeable batteries from Radio Shack and the chargers. I still have these things. Never use the charging anymore. But yeah, Radio Shack, uh, they had the rechargeable batteries. Don't even really use them anymore because of how expensive they were. Charger. Here's the charger. <laughs> if you have those hard to find batteries where you buy at Radio Shack, I don't know which one. I'm trying to see. Sometimes you get these hard to find batteries that um, went into a preamp mic for a CB radio, and you'd have to find something like that. To... There we go. Because I remember my rechargeable batteries were this blue. So rechargeable batteries were how much were they back then? For a D, is that just like per battery? It was like six bucks per battery. But I do remember that these rechargeable batteries that I had from Radio Shack, they did not last as well as they were reusable. And I could plug them into the charger and put power into them. Our nickel calcium batteries recharge over and over again until they don't. Uh, so <laughs> I do remember them not changing. I do remember I had the remote control boat, which is not in this ver this uh, year's catalog, but I, it was probably in the 90s. And it was uh, these things I had in my remote control boat, the fire boat. Thing that they had at Radio Shack. Terrific values in IC and semiconductors. Project, project, breadboard, breadboards and optical electronics. A lot of electronics people would really like. Oh wow, they even have 64K of dynamic RAM. Uh, so if you basically are going to build your own computer, <laughs> you could add RAM, audio amplifiers, or just you know uh, had a project to build and you had some electronics and soldering knowledge and skill. This would be something for you. There's uh, LED lights and uh, also for doing repairs. Like th this was a time when you know you could re you know something broke, uh, they could be repaired. You could go to Radio Shack and do your own repairs. And that was a kind of one of the things about Radio Shack. I think a lot of the viewers of my channel would agree. If you're like an electronics do-it-yourselfer, Radio Shack was really the store for you. You can get things you need and be able to. Um, uh, put things together, assemble things. Oh, we're on page 124. Even for doing your own uh, projects, uh, if you added anything to your car, like a switch or something, some of these things you could add to your car. I actually had one of these switches added to a hard drive on a computer so that I can dual boot, which is probably not the best idea, but it was uh, basically so I can have 
one hard drive, the power go to that on boot, or go to a separate hard drive on boot. Now, you can buy a lot of this stuff online, too. I think the, the place to get a lot of this stuff is like satellite stuff. You have to order it online and have it shipped to you, and it takes months for it to get to you from a foreign country. Oh, and this is what I love about Shack. You got every coaxial TV connectors and adapters and cables. I mean, if I if I wanted to, you know, I didn't have a uh, outdoor CB antenna, I'd hook it up to the TV antenna just to get the uh, antenna outside. You could do just about anything. You go B and C. You can go uh, coaxial to CB. Even if you're running your CB wire through an RG6 cable, you can get any cable that you pretty much needed. Number 28 here. This looks like if you have an Atari. Maybe this one here too. If you had an Atari, you can use this adapter, plug it in, and have a more cleaner connection. And when I discovered that, I mean, I I, pro I pretty much have like cases and cases of this stuff. Oh, here is your uh, RG type cables. So you can buy your RG cables. Now, if you're into CB, you want to have your uh, CB at home or you're an amateur radio operator, you can get your RG8 or RG6. The RG8 was like a very really thick cable um, for your CB radio. Extra wires. I mean, if you're going to wire in a CB, uh, an actuator to your C-band dish, you'd get one of these ribbon wires, run it outside. Yeah, so for all sorts of projects that you would want. Shortwave antenna accessories. Oh, that grabs me there. That's because I like short. Also, this, a lot of this stuff here would work for shortwave radio. I did have a Grundig radio that where would be the adapter that I would need. Three and a half jack, which was common for TV sets. Uh, there, this one here. Number 34, which is F2 mini plug. One, one eight mini plug. Shortwave antennas. Um, shortwave antenna kit. Everything you need for an outdoor antenna package includes 75 feet of copper antenna wire, 50 feet of lead-in wire, window feed through. Oh yeah, this is the window feed through thing. Heavy duty antenna wire, seven 22 gauge bare copper wire for maximum strength. Insulator, strong low mass material, or be number 32, the insulator. Oh, yeah, the insulators. Connect it with Archer plug in jacks, uh, all sorts of more adapters and stuff. You name it, you can pretty much make it work. <laughs> XLR connectors, DIN connectors. So here we got the cooling fans. Uh, I don't know if that would go with a computer. Uh, other accessories. I'm just gonna pan and scan this page here because it's got so much. Plug transformer, some uh, alligator clips. These are good too, the number 14. If you're a shortwave listener, these uh, alligator clips hook your antenna up to the actual antenna, especially if they break. Non-insulated clips, you can use those too. And fuses. I'm, I mean, there's a lot of products that you get in the 80s. They would have fuses. to blow the fuse. You just go get an, open it up, change the fuse in it. There was definitely a lot more repair. You can repair and do it yourself, do on your own stuff with a lot of this stuff. Where now everything's on a cell phone and you throw it away and you get a new phone. And this is kind of more of a miscellaneous. Uh, they threw, threw in joysticks in there. Capacitors. If you have a 30-year-old computer and you want to recap them and recap the power supply you can do that i have no idea how to do this stuff myself but silicon solar cell that would be uh <laughs> make your own uh, buy a whole bunch of these and make uh, power your house something i found years later in a thrift in a uh, dollar store was the uh dim nine um the 10 foot dim nine extension cable i grab I, you know i wish i could get more of these things these are amazing just to be able to hook your atari controller or your sega genesis controller to an extension you can also get your joysticks your arcade quality joysticks one thing i wish you know i would have would have bought back then if i would have known better it just buy like the atari gamepad actually sega master system would probably be the ultimate thing at that time to get and then you know, all the controllers work in your atari and your other systems here's your multi-tasters and your best value some of these things uh for make sure you got power going through your circuit board and there's uh, no shorts in a, in a system soldering kits soldering tools and accessories unique accessory for making the job go easier they don't have the picture of the per of the people holding the soldering iron by the hot, hot part <laughs>
and more tools. Uh, they had lots of tools. Uh, the safe house and the burglar alarms. Uh, these are like your do-it-yourself uh, alarm installations. If you're if you're able to understand the instructions well and hook up all that stuff yourself. Motion detector alarms. I do very much remember going into stores in the 80s or in the 90s and then when you enter you have one of these things going ding dong ding dong cars oh yeah radar detectors something that was um sold in i don't know if they were in canada yeah these things uh basically if there's police um have a, had a radar gun while you're driving by uh it would alarm you to that and i'm not i think they might have been illegal i don't know let me know in the comments if they were or not smoke detectors i when i was a kid i had or i had one of these at one point i don't know if it was like probably this one here the cool thing about it was you know finding stuff in the ground or whatever it's almost the point i wish i had one still because i've worked uh you know drop screws in the grass or whatever and it's uh, able to find them it's kind of a handy tool for uh, that uh maybe all this strike it rich or you'll find gold or whatever i don't know I'm not too sure, sure about that, but uh, one of those things that I think I've seen them in uh, Princess Auto, maybe. AC adapters for foreign travelers. So you got your European plugs. Comes in handy today if you have a uh, here. If you have one of the, um, I don't know if they show the prom. They don't. Oh for the European adapters. When you buy satellite receivers on eBay or Amazon, they'll come with the adapter because they'll have like the uh, European adapters. Uh, kind of a must have for um, if you're CB user, CB or ham transceivers um, to be able to power your system. I don't think I have any of those. I should probably see if I can score one on a garage sale or something like that. Electrical accessories, uh, Kind of, um, you know, I don't know if I, in the 80s, I don't know if I had too many of these power bars, but definitely later on as outlets uh, became more and more necessary, I think I had these things and not the power supply um, uh, surge protector. Pr pretty much every outlet has like one of these for for more accessories. Has a, And then Radio Shack would have like little things like blood pressure detector and pulse detectors, a digital thermometer. Uh, magnifier and flashlights just some of their uh, miscellaneous accessories that they had a moisture meter wireless remote control systems and timers now, radio shack would always be ahead uh, with stuff like this the sad thing is this catalog it doesn't show the back of this so like you don't see like if it goes into an outlet or something like that plug and power and imagine these are uh, so that you can control uh, appliances in your house like basically a lot of appliances that would have like an on off if you turn the power off and they would come on automatically same as like a light timer the uh synchronized announced uh, lcd talking vox watch tells you the time i think that was like a visual aid uh watch that they had in the 80s uh there stop watches two calculator watch it a 24 dollar one and a 15 dollar one something i had for school was a calculator watch even though they would say no calculators in class during math class i still had one of these things and alarm clocks these are just just alarm clocks no clock radio alarm clocks a whole page dedicated to that build it yourself science fair and hobby kits we're traveling through a dimension both of sound and ideas. We're at a place where the mind can comprehend and devise a solar radio, a wireless transmitter, measure time and light. 65 electronic projects brought to reality with this science fair kit. Astonishing, perhaps, but you can find it for Christmas for $17.95 in a place that's known as Radio Shack. Radios, stereos, recorders, everything in sound. 16 one and sometimes they would be the 200 and one kits and i remember it would come with all these wires and you would like wire a circuit to other circuits across the board and you would learn about electronics these were really neat i mean you could build all sorts of you could build like a door alarm uh, sometimes these things would have a radio you could build an am radio with it sometimes they had these that did cri were crystal set radios uh there's the sensor robot electronics lab there is the 100 programs microcomputer trainer 
microcomputer. Oh, really? Yeah. A solar power lab where you can uh, build things that are solar powered, 30 in one project kits. I re and I remember assembling some of these, and you would have to actually like assemble the bottom part first, which is a, a bit of a pay pain. Uh, five transistor radio kit, which would be like a radio, uh, an AM radio. I think I had this one. Tune into local AM broadcast that you can build on our AM radio that you can build yourself. Speaker or earphone for private listening. Co coil spoil assembly requires a 9-volt battery. Oh, yeah, the 9-volt battery would go up there. I remember my brother got something kind of like this. It was the... The, uh, I think we got the later model, the later variant of this. I oh, had yeah, two integrated circuits. Okay, yeah. This is uh, the project kit's no soldering required. $44. It, um, yeah, I think you could do a AM broadcast station and a digital timer modded case with dust cover, out front controls, coil springs, makes project easy to assemble. I, I had a lot of fun with one of these kits. Just basically it came with a book and you would connect the uh, wires to the different circuits. And if you followed it right, you would build like a radio or an alarm or something like that. Different variations of this. I think I had the AM FM radio kit. Although I remember I had, oh yeah. <laughs> See, this is what I would have wanted is I wanted to have my own radio stations. I would have like talk or sing through this a standard AM radio up to 40 feet away, coil springs connected with microphone, nine volt battery. So it was like a little AM radio. Uh, didn't travel very far. Oh, yeah, this is the one I had. I had this shortwave radio, AM shortwave radio, uh, which was a crystal set. So here broadcast from around the world, three bands, 520 kilohertz to 5.5 to 10 kilohertz, 9 to 16 with earphone. Although the thing with that was you had to really switch the bands around, and it came with a really long antenna. I think I had to run the antenna up around the window. My grandfather helped me put this one together. I think this was a crystal radio. Maybe it did have a battery. Yeah, it had a battery, yeah. But I think there was a project where you could build a crystal radio in there. And we got remote control cars. And then they started this controller. I hated the controllers with the steering wheel on it. I, I prefer these type controllers. When I, this controller, what? <laughs> oh, they're just back and forth position. Yeah, those are awful. Same thing with the roving Robbie. The robot performs hands manually, grip control arms. It has a tray, I think, too. Commander robot light gives you realistic uh, hand control. Robbie forward, reverse, turn, and stops it. Yeah, I think I had this one here. It was uh, kind of neat, but also its movement did not go very far it's interesting how they have the stop controls where the tank doesn't go in reverse it goes forward right and left uh this one here goes forward right left reverse straight and then now we're into the video games radio shack electronic games to be enjoyed after time after time baseball and a space cruiser battle game sure space crusher plane and tank battle pocket repeat which is i guess it's kind of like simon astro thunder Battle enemy attackers in a fiery asteroid sound effects. Now we got some chess and some walkie-talkie. I remember at one point I had this Archer radio, this one here, and it had Morse code on the side of it. So it helped kids to learn Morse code. Now, the downfall of this radio is it had the rubber ducky antenna on it. Oh, and it was 49 megahertz. Okay. So it wasn't a CB. So it wasn't compatible with my CBs and also didn't transmit very far. And from what the looks of this $18 pair, which would be the... Uh, these were featured in Back to the Future 2, where uh, Marty McFly is talking to Doc Brown with these little tiny walkie-talkies. But these things did not transmit very far at all. I, I could talk to... I, I was still in talking distance by the time it went out of range. So these were awful, these uh, little radios. A Christmas gift from Radio Shack. I finally found a way to talk to my kids this Christmas. I gave them Radio Shack Space Patrol walkie-talkies. They're terrific outdoor fun. They have flexible antennas to withstand rugged use. And built-in Morse code keys with the code alphabet on the front so they can talk or send messages in code. You've got walkie-talkies. And so did I. Okay, troops, time for lunch. Space Patrol walkie-talkies, 995, only at Radio Shack. And then there's like a kid's uh, intercom pretend telephone that connected together. Uh, this was uh, the wireless FM microphone. This was like something I enjoyed. Just talk to a blank, take it to a blank spot on the radio, 88 to uh, 108 megahertz, 
and you're on the air. Great gift for kids works with any standard FM radio, even in the car, even if even can be used as a small PA system. Includes built-in antenna, eight and a quarter long, requires two AA batteries. But these uh, these little microphones, I don't know, they, they wouldn't transmit very far. They only transmitted, like, across the room, maybe. And you got the Battleship game. Amazing Armtron robot arm. Now, this, uh, I do not remember this at all. Maybe I saw it in the store, and it's kind of like uh, the Nintendo gyro thingy. <laughs> you can control the arm. That's kind of a neat toy, actually. Uh, yeah. And then there's a programmable organ uh, and a sing-along AM radio, where it's just a preamp amplified thing constellation finder learn how to locate and identify the stars so this is kind of like it would it would uh, project the constellations onto your ceiling and help you learn the uh, constellations when you look them out on the sky okay that's kind of neat and then they threw, threw in some uh, circuit testers in with the toys here and an am radio an am only radio here you go with some calculators and <laughs> a long calculator of different sizes I think that was one thing I one thing I do remember is at the time it was like cutting edge technology. It was like the credit card sized calculator. This thing here is kind of interesting. It has a ruler. It's a ruler calculator. Okay, yeah. And the time as well. Electronic and computer books. Let the Radio Shack TRS-80 put the world of color computing into your home. Instant loading program packs turn any color TV into an exciting game arcade. And there's more. The color computer is an educational aid, a home management tool, and up-to-the-minute electronic information service. The programmable, expandable TRS-80 color computer from $399 only at Radio Shack, the biggest name in little computers. And here's where we get into, um, they don't have a lot of the pictures of the items that they have, um, the barcode generator and all this kind of stuff. These um, pre-laptop computers where you can type um uh, uh, type up uh, some stuff in it uh, for six hundred dollars full-size typewriter eight line 40 character display and this is like probably like a really early laptop uh tandy 200 built in uh with multi-plan i guess it would have to like how do you load the software on this and uh, these would be um not a gaming machine but kind of neat to see like how you know w what laptops would become i think the concept was still around and there was like a portable um, floppy, micro floppy drive. I don't know if it takes what type of floppy drive that is. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Oh, I remember that Christmas. Dad gave me my first shortwave radio from Radio Shack. What memories. This Christmas, we got our son's color computer three from Radio Shack. It hooks right up to our TV and was on sale for less than $130. The color computer three makes learning fun. Jimmy even lets me use it for word process when he isn't playing computer games. Lucky I still got my shortwave. Save $70 on the sale-priced Color Computer 3, only at Radio Shack. So portable computers in 1986. Here's where we get into the gaming machines. This would be the Radio Shack Reversal Color Computer 2. It's the 64K, so it's kind of like the 64K microcomputer. And probably more of an affordable computer, so... So as a kind of a general um, software guide of uh, programs that are available, not a huge amount and a little bit of details on the games, but not really pictures with the games yet. And then it has the Tandy connector, uh, which these funky Tandy connector connectors for the Tandy computers. An electric music synthesizer. And this must be a modem because it's like a deluxe RS-232 program pad lets you communicate with major information services and with other computers over telephone lines. Freeze serial port for optional printer. Sound speech program pack. So these are like the, uh, the accessories for the Tandy computers. Also had the tape drive for loading up programs. And number eight, multi-pack interface for multiple cartridges. There's some disk drives for uh, for the Tandy system. Uh, has it the DiskMate uh, software? So it, it does have like a telecommunication connection in this. This is kind of interesting. Telephone modem, acoustic modem. I guess that's what the term is. 
Oh yeah, yeah, there it is there, the acoustic modem. Although if you're gonna do any modem connecting w over the internet, you're probably better to uh, just have a direct line instead of doing the acoustic modem because these things can still be a little, not the greatest. And I think these would be, you'd be able to get a faster baud rate <laughs> for uh, connecting to BBSs and things like that. And software packages. Disk Mate 6 in 1 software included, which is, I guess, is kind of like a word, uh, kind of a, an early geo graphical user, a graphical user interface for the Tandy computers. So it gave you, it gave you a few basic apps. Computer furniture, you got your computer desk. Dust covers were a, a big thing then. There's disk storage, cassette, certified cassette tapes for data storage, a monitor pedestal. And printers, printers were quite expensive in the, those days, and they were the matrix dot matrix printers as well. They did have color ink jets. Oh yeah, if you wanted, if your computer can generate color, <laughs> it was available in 1986. But I remember this time, there's a lot of dot matrix printers. Uh, people used to go to sporting events and have like a dot matrix printed banner. There's the Tandy 600 and the uh, Tandy 200. Yesterday, buying an IBM XT was a good business decision. But today, the Tandy 1200 from Radio Shack can give you the same power and performance for about half the price. The 1200 runs the same IBM XT compatible software, is backed by a company committed to service and support. And the Tandy 1200 costs about half as much. Tandy, clearly superior. In business, for business. Only at Radio Shack Computer Center more software so there's another tandy computer and a whopping 10 megabyte hard drive for 700 dollars and this is an external hard drive which would go into your tandy system and uh you'd use the deskmate uh os i guess the deskmate was an os i'm not sure i'll just look into that i'm curious about that and that's the end of the catalog. It yeah, just has like the stereo, part of the satellite dish from the other side of the catalog. Four kinds of Radio Shack stores. There's your Radio Shack, your Radio Shack Plus Computer Center, your Radio Shack Computer Center, and your Radio Shack Computer Center, Radio Shack Telephone Center, because I guess they had different variants of the Radio Shack stores. Yeah, so thanks for uh, looking through this with me. Check out Fairpoint Farms videos. He's gone to a still open Radio Shack did a video tour of uh, one of those places uh here in canada we have the source still around in malls but it's not quite the same as what radio shack used to be it's more cell phones and maybe the a few electronics not to the glory that radio shack once was with uh, you walked in there and it was definitely a magical store to go to it was my stop in the mall all the, for for many years another thing is i wanted to see and they had no disclaimer for in this video uh, or in this catalog but licenses for CB radios ended around 1983 so that uh, made these things open like anyone could buy could buy them at least in the United States I had a harder time figuring out exactly when it happened in Canada I would imagine very close to the same time uh, where you used to need CB licenses that was kind of like there's a lot of misinfo about that before the internet where people will talk on these, it's like, you don't need a license for these, and then people come up, oh, you need, to, you need a license for these. There's so much disinformation, but maybe it caused a resurgence of people using them once they uh, stopped having to have licenses for these. Anyone can use them, even you can still use CB radios to this day. So that was a big thing on this, uh, on this uh, catalog I wanted to look at is the CB radios, and also what the, um, and also because there's a satellite dish on the cover of it. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll go through some more catalogs uh, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at them. And also uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like if you made it to the end of this video. And uh, and uh, I, I, I'm planning on doing a live stream going through this site. Just, uh, just right for the site. So stay tuned for that I'll, where I can do a live stream. Uh, and if you want to call in and give me any comments you have about Radio Shack or memories you have of Radio Shack, I'd love to hear about it either in the comments of this video or if you want to tune into my live stream, which I'm planning to post the date after this video comes out.